Hello and welcome, I'm Omnus and today I will review the 10th and final studio album by the King of Pop, Invincible. Yeah, I've delayed this album for a long time since I didn't really want to talk about this album since it was seen as a bad album and I didn't want to tarnish the Michael Jackson legacy I suppose. You know, I only talked about his first five albums, you know. The real first five albums, if you know what I mean. Um, and I'm even open to review Blood on the Dance Floor, the remix album, you know, if you know what I mean. Not at all bollocks. Uh, it's not really an album, I get that, but you know, you have some, you have some original songs on there, so it's kind of an EP-ish, which, you know, together with the remix album, but we're not here to talk about that today. Uh, this was recorded the last uh, major label release by Michael Jackson uh, after a 10 year wait for Dangerous. And that's not entirely true because he still, you know, made his story, literally, uh, his story, that's how you say it. Uh, he made it in 95. Um, but, you know, 13 new tracks, I believe, so somewhere around the 13, 15. 15 track mark uh, then he made a remix album with some new tracks two years later which it's kind of an EP in a way because there are only five new songs so I guess um, and then of course his last album four years later Invincible so it was not entirely uh, you know absence for a decade you know he also had the child porn allegations and just all that bullshit and really didn't want to deal with that because, because I thought, you know, I, I, I just don't want to deal with that. But, but I still don't have to deal with that technically because, you know, I'm just reviewing a record. But, uh, but, but I think it's very sad that, uh, you know, that's, that it happened like that. That's, that, you know, this record came out. But this is kind of like a swan song. Yeah, Swan Song uh, album from Michael Jackson. You know, it is kind of like gray, blue-ish. It's a very somber kind of mellow album. It's very, very calm for the most part. Uh, these first couple of tracks are kind of, you know, hip-hop-ish, which I don't mind, but they're kind of unnecessary, honestly. Um, and I think, honestly, as time went on, that Michael got more and more bullshit uh, features on his, uh, on his tracks. Um, you know what I mean with that? Um, you, you know, on a thriller he got, I believe, Paul McCartney, which was a nice duet, I think. On 87, I don't even fucking remember, honestly. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. <laughs> In bad. Um, I have no idea who, who, who was featured on that album. I'm not even sure. I believe no one, not really on his first three albums. Then they, he, he got crazy on Dangerous though. You know, uh, who was on there? Uh, Eddie Murphy, I believe, who was in the music video from uh, Remember the Time. Um, but yeah, yeah, Eddie Van Halen on a thriller, <laughs> to, to go back a bit. Uh, Slash on a Dangerous. Given to me, I believe that's the uh, title. Uh, Jam, I believe Shaquille O'Neal was on there on, on the opening track, which is a great opening track, by the way. I do really like that. But we are, but we already discussed that, so there we go. Uh, so I do really like, you know, that stuff. So there we go. But I do think that it's kind of got crazy, you know, on uh, his story. Uh, well, you know, Janet Jack Jackson was a nice addition because uh, she was there to stand up for Michael Jackson because he got slammed in the public. So that is, you know, a nice system move from her part. Um, there were some really unnecessary features though on his story, but, I've, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm making things up now. But I believe there were some bullshit. Uh, collaborations on it all, you know, now I want to check, so there you go. I'm curious now. Um, 
or well, uh, Slash is also on DS, so, well, Michael and Slash are good friends, that's nice here. Not, not, not that I care, but you know, at least Slash is doing something good. Uh, yeah, Janet Jackson, uh, yeah, Biggie Smalls this time around, he's also on the opening track, I believe, on this album. Um, I just do not understand why Biggie Smalls raps on here. Um, yeah, Shaquille and Neil on Too Bad, yeah, and the title is kind of accurate for that song, so there we go. Uh, so, you know, this album has grown on me, his story, his story, you know, you have to pause there, but I've... I'm so fucking impatient. Uh, yeah, so it's a good album, but you know, I, I still don't think it's their best. I still don't think it is his best, but it is a classic. Or it is kind of a hidden gem in his discography since it is technically a compilation album, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so the first song, you know, we're, we're six minutes in, we haven't even talked about the first song, but I mean, it is a Michael Jackson review, so. It's a special artist, so might as well make it a bit of a long one. I don't know how much time I have though, but you know, we'll see. Uh, Unbreakable um, starts off kind of mellow and kind of, you know, reserved before going into a more slamming kind of hip hop, late 90s, early 2000s kind of mentality, kind of style. Um, I do think that this song is kind of 50 50 for me where the first half is kind of nice and the second half where biggie smalls comes in you know i like biggie smalls personally i think he's a good rapper but i i just think that michael jackson and biggie smalls like that is one of the most unlikely and one of the most unwanted collaborations ever and you know biggie smalls passed away back then so he had no control over the feature and Michael Jackson, you know, he probably said like, just do it because rap is a thing, because it's hip, it's hip, hip by the kids, you know. <laughs> you, well, I want to make a pedo joke there, but I, I know that people are very sensitive about the whole Michael Jackson beautiful thing, but you know, I, I like to joke around with that stuff because, you know, it has happened. You kind of have to, you kind of have to joke about it because, you know, to lighten up the mood I suppose, but I know that a lot of people bitch about that, but I'm not serious about that stuff. You know, I forgot the joke already, so <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, then we have Heartbreaker, which is kind of like, it does kind of give me an Elvis vibe now that, that, now that I'm reading the title. And definitely in the beginning, I definitely get some kind of Elvis vibe from this, you know, Elvis Presley kind of vibe to this Heartbreak Hotel, you know what I mean? Uh, but I do think that later the song, you know, it has a pointless feature again and spoiler alert, the following song too. Uh, Fats? Yeah, this is just kind of like a generic rapper, honestly. He kind of sounds like a better version of Puff Daddy, in my opinion. Uh, that's not a compliment, you know, Puff Daddy, you know, being a little bit better than Puff Daddy, still not really good, so there we go. Uh, but I think rap in general on Michael Jackson albums is very, it's just very unnecessary, I think. Well, you know, did it happen on a Dangerous? Yeah, I believe there was some hip hop on Dangerous, which I didn't mind. I, I thought it was a nice touch, nice flavor. Um, so, you know, Michael probably thought, oh, you know, the first time it worked, so might as well repeat the success, right? Because people like that. But, but I think that it was just a nice executed tone on how it was performed in Dangerous. And I think that on, on uh, his story and this album especially, he just went crazy on the features on this album. But it isn't that bad, you know, after, after the third track, we don't get the feature until the second last track. So it isn't that bad, but it's still unnecessary as well. I mean, come on now. Now we have Invincible, which is definitely a nicer song to listen to. This is this is uh, the start of the records becoming very mellow and very slow, which I don't mind. But um, you know, you know. But I think it is a very like moody, mellow album. It is kind of perfect if you uh, you know if you think about it. You know, Michael Jackson closing out his career with a very mellow and a very quiet album. Go go out on a Go out, go out on a quiet note, which is, yeah, 
you know, if you think about it, that's most that's how most people want to go out on, on a quiet note, I suppose. Kind of a fitting note, so there we go. Uh, so that's this song, it's very nice, I just think that the features are necessary, but it's still a good song, I think, but you know, a necessary feature. Uh, then we have Break of Dawn, which is arguably one of my favorite songs of the album. Uh, just a very, very amazing song, I think. Five and a half minutes. Uh, it's co-written by Elliot Strait. I don't know who that is, but you know, might as well click on her. Oh, there's Dr. Freeze. What the fuck? Not to be confused with Mr. Freeze. What? Mr. Freeze. Yeah, you know, the comic book character, but... So, a comic book character wrote it the song, or what the fuck, Dr. Freeze, what? Yeah, so apparently it is a dude. Dude looks like a lady. Oh my, you know, I, I quoted myself on the, on like the previous video. Don't make Aerosmith jokes anymore, because fuck that man, but... Why am I throwing that band on there again? Fucking hell, especially on the MJ video, that's, that's disrespectful as fuck. Um... Well, yeah, but I'm a disrespect, disrespectful boy, so, you know, fuck the rules, but it's MJ, come on now, come on now. Um, but Break of Dawn, you know, like I said, very beautiful song, very atmospheric in a way. It is kind of the same as the other songs, very mellow and very, you know, uh, just samey in that tone. But I think that this one has a... Be this one has better production, I think. It has a better tone to it. Uh, it's just an amazing song, I think. I just really love the melody on the song. I really love the kind of haunting, uh, ghostly tone that the record has. That that's probably what I love most about the song. It sounds really like Michael's going to heaven, like his ghost is like uh, flying in the air and just you know reaching beyond the clouds and the the heaven the heaven's gates where Michael of course belongs. Um, yeah, very fitting song, probably one of my personal favorite. It might even crack my top 10 favorite Michael Jackson songs. That's how great it is, I think. Uh, yeah, so there we go, great song, I, I loved it, and um, there you go. Speaking of Heaven, we have Heaven Can Wait, uh, probably one of my favorites too. It is kind of similar to Break of Dawn, but it is a bit more upbeat and a bit more in the Michael Jackson kind of sense. And well, I did recently say to myself that I that it is kind of a pet peeve that he does, uh, you know, the the moan or something or the 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 breath move whenever he is uh, the cha, you, you know, on on the on bad dangerous era I think, and also his story. Although he was a bit more mellow on that album, but he still kind of did it there. Uh, and I think yeah, I believe on Twitter he didn't do it so. There you go. But that's kind of a pet peeve of mine that Mike Wall always did that. You know, it is a classic, it's kind of a signature sound of his right now, but I was, I, it always was a kind of hit or miss move for me. And he, does, he does it a little bit on this one, but he doesn't overdo it. So it's kind of a gimmick, I suppose. You know, like the moonwalk, but you know, you don't really have to hear that. You just see that if you watch a live performance. I don't know why, yeah, you know, just watch. Oh, I'm fucking weird. Uh, we have, of course, the lead single of this record, uh, or the, the biggest single of this record, You Rock My World. Um, and this would have been, or this would have been one of my favorite tracks, which it isn't. Uh, because that opening is just so fucking cringeworthy. Like, um, I believe it's Kevin Hart or something, or, well, Kevin Hart. <laughs> was Kevin Hart even born back then? He was so he just no he is so fucking small now you know how, how small w w would he have been if he was on here he maybe was though he maybe was I don't I don't know so it sounds like it sounds like Kevin Hart to me or something or you know one of those fucking blokes one of those clowns I have no fucking clue but there's this really cringy guy it's, it might be Eddie Murphy. Uh, I won't say Will Smith, but I know how, how Will Smith sounds. So it's probably Eddie Murphy or something, you know, who also was on uh, the Dangerous album. Which I didn't mind, uh, you know, I, I liked him on that album, he, he was fitting. 
But if that is him on this arm, he is so fucking cringy, honestly. Like, ooh, that girl over there. Ooh, damn, that's. Ooh, you look my fine, girl. And, you know, and Jackson is just like, uh, yeah, you're right. She's looking good. <laughs> it's just such a cringy conversation. Like, the, the conversation lasts for one minute or something. And you know, you know, I thought, oh, maybe it is for the music video or something, but it is actually, I listened to it on Spotify. It's on the Spotify version. So every time I want to hear this song, I have to hear that cringe-worthy fucking conversation every fucking time. Which is very, very annoying, mind you. So, yeah, that is, that is a big flaw of the song. I, I think overall it's a nice song. It's a very, very nice R&B pop. R&B pop song, it's just a very, you know, groovy song to dance to. It's on, kind of on the generic side, honestly, you know, it's good. But it doesn't really, you know, have a lot of flash to it, I think. It doesn't really have a lot of meat. It just is kind of a boneless, kind of dancey song, I think. It is good, but it's, it's just kind of a typical filler hit single, I suppose. I do like it, but I prefer the kind of more haunting, uh, ghostly tones of the record, which, you know, the record is filled with, so there we go. Uh, then we have Butterflies, which is also one of my favorites. Um, no, not this one. The next one is a special one, even more special. A very beautiful song. It's 4 minutes and 40 seconds long. Um, yeah, just you know, you get butterflies for hearing this, for, for hear, from hearing this song. Very special song. Uh, you know, just gives me a good of uh, goosebumps. It's just a very nice song. I, I, you know, I think that it's a very underrated song on, on a very underrated album, in my, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so there we go. I, I did like it, so yeah, nice song, nice song to listen to. Uh, then we get to the centerpiece of the record, which is uh, Speechless. And this song was, this is the only uh, solely written song by Michael Jackson. And it's relatively easy. And I think that this might be the perfect song for him to go out on. But there's one other hit single on there. Um, yeah, and this is a very quiet, moody piece to, to uh, I, 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 I almost want to say, close out. It would have been a perfect close closing on closing song, I, I would say. But you know, there we go. Um, yeah, a very very emotional tune. It's very simplistic though. It has a very simple chord structure. It's just do do do. You know, three chords I believe, and they don't really change that often. They only change you know throughout the ending. I would say a bit. Um, but I don't really mind the simplicity of the song, honestly. I, you know, I really love it. I think it really adds to the emotion of the song. You don't want to uh, overcomplicate, uh, you know, a heart, heartwarming tune. So I think that Michael did a fine job on there. And then we have 2000 Watts, which is probably my least favorite of the album. This song sounds so out of place, honestly. It's just so awkward, I think. It is just so weird uh wait is my computer falling out what the fuck no uh 2000 watts it's kind of awkward to me you know it's kind of sounds like a commercial or something it's, it's just kind of dumb it's kind of a pointless song i think uh it's also written by jackson for some reason well i believe that yeah jackson wrote it a majority of the songs except for like one or something which will which we will which we will get to and all of the others were co-written by a shit out of other artists artists so there we go but maybe michael only said uh, i wanted this title for the song or something and then the other guys wrote it the song i don't fucking know um yeah so what's the thing uh, yeah, 2000 Watts is pretty much my least favorite song of the album. It just sounds robotic, you know, it just sounds like an ad to me. It sounds like an ad on, on my product, on my album. So, yeah, just get it away, honestly. Uh, then we have Privacy, which is a very, um, you know, personal song to Michael Jackson. You know, just basically talking about 
his privacy, obviously, his, uh, you know, the paparazzi, you know, uh, that they can't leave him alone and just all the bullshit that goes with that. And this is kind of a rehash tune, I think, because he also did the song Leave Me Alone, I believe. So this is a rehashed, um, you know, what's the thing? A rehashed uh, song structure, a re rehashed song. Yeah, just a rehashed song, so there we go. Um, it is good. It is, you know, kind of on the you leave, uh, leave me alone kind of quality. It is good, but, you know, I can't see why it was an outtake. But I do really love that song, though. But that whole bad arm is just fucking, I mean, it's fucking killer. Come on. Uh, now we have Don't Walk Away. Um, uh, just a very emotional tune, too. Uh, you know, I cannot really say that any of these songs are like, you know, bad or something because they're not. Uh, but definitely this one feels the, the least inspired, I would say. The least, uh, you know, just nah kind of song. Uh, it's just kind of the most forgettable song on this album. I, I, you know, I just think that this record is meh in a way. It's just an average song. It's kind of like... Invincible is kind of like this average record and the song perfectly syncs up with that with other songs you know going up a bit other songs going a bit downhill because of a pointless rap act or something uh, and I think that that song you know don't walk away just kind of like I said walks the line perfectly to, to, to be the most forgettable song on the album uh, then we get a song by Robert Kelly. Yeah, fuck. It. Well, you know, I was thinking uh, Robert Kelly, like the fuck. But of course, I mean R. Kelly, who is of course. Um, I don't even know. You know, I I all I always get confused with Nelly and R. Kelly. Like Nelly is like I'm so fuck. Well, or they're both pedophiles, but I believe Nelly is. Um, you know, what's the thing? Nelly. That's like the generic rapper who raps about bitches and hoes and holding hair and all that shit. And R. Kelly is the one that, um, you know, uh, that released the song In The Closet or something. And he re-released -re that song like 50 times at this point, maybe even more. And the original song was bad, mind you, but he re-released it 50 other fucking times. So there we go. So I believe, yeah, and R. Kelly, full blown pedophile, so fuck you. You know, R. Kelly is the fucking uh, suspect right here, not MJ, you dipshits. But, uh, you know, not to talk about the writer of, this, of the album, of, of the song. Uh, it is a good song, it's definitely one of my favorites of the album. Although, you know, it, it is written by a pedophile, but what the fuck. Oh, but it's also sung by a pedophile, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Um, but Cry is definitely a very emotional tune, very great vocals by Michael Jackson. Uh, just a very uh, nice song to listen to, very mellow, very accessible. Uh, I personally think that this is how You Rock My World should have been. Just a bit more out there, just a bit more carefree, a bit more, you know, naturally, I suppose. Whereas You Rock My World sounds very formulaic and very a structured and what's the word here processed i suppose it, it just sounds like it sounds processed in my opinion but you know if you like the song i do like the song but i, I just think it's a bit on the generic side you rock my role that is i do like rice probably you know probably my fourth favorite of the album uh, then we have the lost children which is a very haunting tune and i was actually wrong about the solely written tracks because the lost children was also solely written by jackson and also speechless so um and this is actually a way you know more diverse tune i would say way more um well it, it just way um just yeah just more emotional tune just way encapsulates more emotion, just encapsulates more feeling on the track, encapsulates more passion, I would say, you know, in speeches he just kind of kept one tone and just went with that. And on The Lost Children, he really goes out of his way to really, uh, you know, 
try to make a great record here. He really tries his heart out, I think. And I, and I do think that this is the last time that Michael really tried to, uh, you know, to make it happen, to kind of spark the magic back again of his career. And that's really a nice gift, uh, the Lost Children, you know. It's, it's kind of a common, and he's also the, the only sole producer of the album, or, or of, of the record. Uh, yeah, you know, also with, uh, with Speechless, there we go. Uh, yeah, so definitely a very underrated song, of a very underrated album, I would say. Um, I just love the ghostly tone again, I just love that, you know, Michael repeats it again, but it was so nice to hear the first time. So why not repeat it a second time, right? So he did. But it feels even more impactful and even more bigger and grander in skill on this record. I, I don't know what it is, you just have to listen to it. It's such a great atmosphere, it's just such an overall amazing song. Check it out. Um, then we have Whatever Happens featuring Carlos Santana. A very catchy tune, it has a shitload of fucking uh, Sora uh, or co-riders on it. Um, definitely probably my favorite feature on this album because you know it is a guitarist instead of a, a rapper which you know makes more sense in a way uh, so this is definitely a, a nicer feature although it is still kind of pointless to me but you know good to see that Michael at least goes out on a better feature than you know than uh, originally 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 yeah, let's keep it at that, I'm going to try it again. Origin, original, originally, there we go. Why do I keep trying it, man? Never give up. And the last song is Threatened, which is, uh, well, you know, all the songs are kind of, uh, you know, they begin they begin with uh, Jackson and then Jerkins and then Jerkins 3 and then Daniels, or on, at least on this track. So uh, a couple of consistent or related people wrote it this tune. So this one is a bit more consistent, I would say, a bit more, you know, uh, just smoother in a way. Just a nicer process and there's overall better production, better flow, I would say. Um, yeah, very, very nice song, I would say. Very good closing song. Although this song is kind of the same as Don't Walk Away, whereas it kind of walks the fine line of mediocrity. And, uh, you know, like, there are some moments that it goes up again, and some moments that it kind of becomes average again. So that's kind of how I feel about the song. It's probably like a strong 6 to a light 7 or something. This, you know, that song, not per se the album. We, we will get into the, into the album rating. And I'm already 28 minutes busy with this album, so this might be my longest album review in, in a long, in a long time. But I mean, it is Michael Jackson, so come on now. You gotta make an exception, an exception for the King of Pop. And maybe the King of Pop can give me some uh, speak lessons. But that is, of course, not possible anymore. Um, yeah, let's go track by track, you know, summarize the record a bit. Uh, Unbreakable is... You know, it's good at the beginning, kind of goes downhill afterwards, you know, with the biggie feature. Heartbreakers, kind of worse, because it has a worse feature. Invincible is probably the best out of these three. Break of Dawn is beautiful, Have a Can Wait is beautiful, You Rock My World is good, but the beginning is bad and the song is kind of bland to me. Butterflies is nice, Speechless is great, 2000 Watts is probably my least favorite of the album, You Are My Life is... Uh, did I even talk about this, uh, this song? Oh, I believe I actually skipped the song. <laughs> well, that should say it off, right? Forgettable. Privacy is good, but it is a rehashed concept. Oh, that, that was the word I was looking for, concept. Rehashed concept from uh, you, you Leave Me Alone, of course. Leave Britney alone. Leave her alone. Um, don't walk away, forgettable, cry is good, but it's written by Pedo. Uh, just, you know, I don't really like the the 2000s R&B style of the song. Although it's still my fourth favorite of the album, but, you know, I just don't, don't like the writer of this uh, fucking song. 
Well, I, did, I, I believe you did right, you are not alone too, but that's, those songs are fucking pervy, I mean, come on now, it's R. Kelly. They're not bad, but they're just, you know, they're not up there for me as my favorite MJ songs. So I might pick a new favorite. The Lost Children is, yeah, I'll probably pick, pick The Lost Children then. Great song, very, very underrated song. Whatever happens is a good question, whatever happened to you, Michael. Uh, best feature on, on the song, on the album. And Threatened is kind of an underwhelming closing song, so... Overall, this was a very average album, I would say. There's some really great songs on it, and it has some underwhelming songs on it. I, I wouldn't say it has like a terrible song on it, but 2000 Watts comes very close to that level. It comes very close to terrible level, but it's just a bad song. So I'm gonna give this record a 7 point... Hmm, what should I give it? I'm gonna give this record a 7.2. Yeah, it's good. It's average, but I don't think, you know... Well, I will revisit it again. I do think it's an underrated album, but it's definitely the weakest Michael Jackson album in his discography. You know, from the real albums, I suppose. So there we go. This album, the, 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 the video is almost like full like 32 minutes is my max so i have to finish now uh, so thank you for watching this video like on, like on subscribe to the channel and from video like well, let me know what you think about invincible by michael jackson uh yeah still talked about it 32 minutes despite me not loving it but i still like it so there we go um yeah let me know what you think about it in the comments down below and i'll see you guys in the next video uh i'm not gonna say that well uh Bless Michael Jackson, rest in peace. I'm gonna say that. Rest in peace, you legend. Well, I will always love Michael Jackson, he's one of the greats. So, there we go. Not my number one favorite pop star, if you know my number one, but he's definitely a close second. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, but still, you yeah. know, rest in peace, Michael Jackson. I will always love your music, and peace, rest in peace, champ.